James Bertram Collop was born November 20, 1892 in Belleville, Ontario, and later on became an expert in the field of biochemistry. J.J. R. McLeod, who had supervised the project, contacted Collop. Hello, Professor. I have been supervising a recent study, and it seems that my fellow scientists have come to a halt in their findings, which has stopped any further progress for the pair. I remember from our past meeting that you have researched the effect of pH on the concentration of sugar in the blood. This project is searching for a treatment for diabetes, which connects to your recent work. Your task would be to prepare the insulin in a more pure, usable form. We would love to have you join our team. J.J.R. McLeod. James Bertram Cullop's research program on the effect of pH on the concentration of sugar in the blood took lead in Ontario, which carried him to many marine biological stations. During his research, a pair of scientists, Dr. Frederick Banting and Charles Best, who were working together at the University of Toronto, had struggled in their search for a treatment for diabetes. They had begun this in May 1921. He left his other research and joined the team of scientists in need of help. There, Cullop was given the task of trying to purify the insulin so that it would be clean enough for testing on humans. So what have you found so far? Oh, hello, Cullop. Dave Banting. Okay. Well, we began our experiments by removing the pancreas from a dog. This resulted in its blood sugar rising. It became thirsty, drank lots of water, and urinated more than often. It became weaker and weaker. The dog had developed diabetes. Through further testing with the pancreas of the dogs, we isolated the substance called isolatin, which we later changed to call insulin. The extract was injected into the diabetic dog, its blood glucose level dropped, and it seemed healthier and stronger. By giving the diabetic dog a few injections a day, we could keep it healthy and free of symptoms. We later did more tests to prove that our pancreatic extract worked really well, except we moved to a larger pancreas taken from a cattle. Interesting. Let's get to work, shall we? Okay. Professor. Yes? I believe that shrinking the pancreas is quite unnecessary. How come? Because using whole fresh pancreas from adult animals works just as well. Interesting discovery. Are we ready for clinical trials, Professor? Well, there's a boy in need of insulin, Charles Best, who is working on the project with us. He administered him a dosage, but it was not purified, so the result of the extract was very terrible. Interesting. Yes, so I will leave you, and hopefully you can figure something out to help us. Let's see what I can do. Okay. Cullop continued his work to purify the insulin and experimented with trying to find the correct dosage. He learned how to diminish the effect of an insulin overdose with glucose in different forms. He discovered that the glucose should be as pure as possible. The first use of insulin was on January 11, 1922, at the Toronto General Hospital. Dr. Ed Jeffrey injected, as he described, 15 cc of thick brown muck into the 14-year-old Leonard Thompson. This extract, made by Charles Best, was a failure. Banting, come quickly. I purified the substance. Let's get to clinical trials right away. The experiment was resumed on January 23rd, when he was given 5 cc of new extract prepared by James Bertram Cullop, and then 10 milliliters more over the next 24 hours. This time, the results were spectacular. James Bertram Cullop, 1892-1965, has been described as the forgotten member of the team which discovered insulin in 1921-1922. Through his findings, he had made rapid progress and so began the distribution and replication of insulin.